you ever wanted to live in the Borderlands universe, dance with Claptrap, go toe to toe with the biggest bosses in the wasteland, sneak a peek at what the Iridium guy's body looks like? Welcome back to Watch Later with Leo Vader, a series about the overlooked nuggets in gaming I can't stop thinking about. I love Borderlands 2. I've started it dozens of times over the years, and I love VR. So when I heard about Borderlands 2 VR yesterday, years after it came out, I thought all my wildest dreams had come true. It was a 2018 PlayStation VR game, re-released on Steam in 2019, so the complaints I'm about to have should be viewed through that uh, compassionate lens. I just always think it's interesting to play earlier VR games and feel where they fell flat compared to modern titles. Obviously, the very first thing I tried to do when I started a new game was flip off Claptrap, but the hand models don't have moving fingers. It's Sisyphean, but you can at least rudely mime checking your watch while he's talking, which is cathartic. I hit my first bug using Bamf mode, the time slowing ability new to this VR version, which slowed time to a stop and never resumed. It gave me serious Adam Sandler's click vibes, only this time I'm not laughing. I got my hand on my first shotgun and not being able to hold it with two hands instantly felt terrible in VR. That's a feature that's as much for accuracy as it is for feeling the weight of the weapon and missing both of those instantly makes shooting in VR boring. Feels like you're wiggling a little paper shotgun around. The other thing about the shooting in this is that you hold left trigger to slow your movement and tighten the spread of your weapon, a feature from console shooters that has never been brought to VR to my knowledge. Because you can usually just look down the sights to be more accurate. It's the same reason VR games don't have a scope button. You just put the scope up to your eye. But not here. With a scoped weapon, holding left trigger just pops up a little monitor of what the scope sees at a different frame rate than the game is playing at. I get that making every scope fully functional would be a massive undertaking with this many guns. Something a lot of early VR games never planned for was how stupid players are willing to look to exploit melee attacks, and this game is no exception. Huh. Child's play. Who's next? There's a little bit of a cooldown on when you can make physical contact with an enemy, but it's less than a second, and it's separate for each hand. So I quickly discovered a flurry of strikes was my fastest, best option for taking down enemies. Before I knew it, I was fighting like one of the martial arts greats, moving like water through my environment, taking each foe out with deadly precision. I also discovered the rack, those annoying bat birds that were so hard to shoot on console, are pretty easy to outplay by basically pre-firing with your fists and waiting for them to fly into you. Taking out bosses faster than I ever have before with rapid fire slaps is so stupid, but mixing punches in with gunshots is actually pretty fun. Though it would be much better if I could clench my hand into a fist rather than open palm slapping everyone. But that's just my personal fighting style. This game always had cool vertical levels, but the controls aren't there to do much cool with them here. As there's no jumping and moving between heights with the VR teleportation is so clunky you can't even get out of the water if you fall in. I have other boring complaints, like how the siren's phase lock works like 5% of the time, grenades just fly out of you when you press the button instead of you throwing them, general bugginess, and there's no co-op, which is like 60% of the appeal of these games. But really, it's not a terrible experience. Cell shaded art like this holds up so well and looks better than ever in VR. I've never wanted to stop so often to take in the environment in Borderlands before. Plus, this is just one of the biggest games you can play in VR. The number of missions and size of the open world and the amount of loot, it's pretty unprecedented compared to what else I could be playing in a headset. So at the end of the day, it's a neat experience. Wait, really? $50. Okay, never mind, it sucks. That's over double the price for a version without co-op. VR at least includes all the DLC, but it should have just been an add-on to the base game anyway. Why am I buying the same game again for way more money when the VR controls are just crudely ported console controller controls? But if you're one of Jeff Bezos' kids and you want to buy this anyway, at the end of the day, it's still really novel to be immersed in that stylish, unique Borderlands world in VR. And not in an unofficial, half-baked way, but an official half-baked way. Thanks for watching. If you like this, check out my many other watch laters or this stream of me playing Hitman 3. I also streamed my gameplay capture and editing of this video to our Backstage Pass patrons. So head to patreon.com slash minmax if you're interested in checking those out in the future. Bye, kiss kiss.